heart is something, the heart is something special. I was big in sports. I spent a lot of time working out. And I was uh, boxing, and I was running the ice cream store, and I was raising my two little girls. It was in the summer in Texas, which is really hot, and I used to run at two in the afternoon because that's when I could get away. And I really started getting a lot of dizzy spells. When you're doing a lot of sports, you kind of learn to, to regulate your own um, heart rate. And you know if you feel it going down, you just relax and try and breathe into it until it comes back up. And it really, it wasn't working, and it had. But I still didn't do anything about it, because I you know, still had to go for a run, I still had to run the company, I still had to take care of the girls, and there was no time to be sick. And I had a really great friend who just said, Amy, on the way home, just stop by the emergency room. It's no harm. You can just get, you know, you might find out nothing's wrong and you might find out that there's a simple solution. You know, I was going to drive home and I heard his beautiful voice and caring for me. And I just turned into to the hospital. They did an EKG and then I put a halter monitor on for a day and it took about two to three weeks for them to, to read that. And they called me, I was at Deep Eddy, I was going in for a swim. They said, don't drive. <laughs> kind of unusual, a uh, super athletic, super healthy person. And she said, you know, when I ran, I felt fine. I never had a problem running. It would be the next day I would find myself on my back on the floor of my office because I couldn't function. In her case, the alternative was to give her a permanent pacemaker. It was so immediate how I felt. I, it was remarkable. I, I, I just can't believe, I can't believe the invention. I ran a marathon not long after I had the pacemaker put in. And you know, I'm kind of bionic, really. It's, I'm kind of cheating. <laughs> I actually had a better marathon after the pacemaker than I did before. <laughs> when I first uh, finished my training in the, in the early 90s, uh, I would see lots of patients with genuine uh, fast heart rhythm issues that were easily fixable that had gone years, sometimes decades, being told that it w they were just uh, histrionic, that it was panic attacks, that it was all in their head. Uh, we just have to work through that and make sure that people understand that there are genuine fixable problems that feel very similar to some of these other uh, uh, conditions. It is scary. It's scary. And you know, that's, that's a natural response to thinking you have a heart issue or is that something isn't perfect in your body. But there are people out there that'll really surprise you that are living with some pretty serious issues and have beautiful active lives. Imagine, you know, before the pacemaker, I, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have my business. I wouldn't be able to parent my children. That was engineering coming to, together with cardiac research. And it's American Heart Association that's funding that, that's driving the interest in it, and especially the Go Red campaign because it's focused on women. It's not that men aren't important also, it's that we tend not to focus on women and women don't focus on women. American Heart Association is sort of then the, the leader in this country in uh, not only improving uh, women's awareness of, of cardiac conditions, but, but the entire community. The one thing is to trust your gut because you really, you know, you know if you're not feeling right. And it just, it, it may be something that's tiny or it may be something that's big, but it's your, it's your future and it's your family's future. And it's your ability to do all those things that you can't stop doing today in the future if you take care of yourself.